Standoffs are commonly used throughout the world and are crucial to the design of an FRC robot. Today, we'll cover the six simple steps to cut a custom standoff. Step one, selecting stock. First, we'll select the stock, aka material, that we'll be using. We use three main materials to make standoffs. Half inch round stock aluminum, 3 8 inch round stock aluminum, and half inch hex shaft aluminum. We can view the type of stock to use based on the CAD model. If you have any doubts about stock, don't hesitate to ask an experienced member. Step two, cut off. Once we've selected our stock, we may need to cut off the extra material. For this example, we'll be making a half inch round standoff that's one inch long. As we can see, the stock is much longer than we need, so we should make a rough cut. If there were a smaller piece of stock or scrap that was pretty close to the desired length, we could skip this step. I'll roughly mark the stock at the length of the standoff, careful to give myself some extra room. We'll make this rough cut on this, the horizontal bandsaw. It's crucial that we ensure the stock is secured tightly, otherwise it'll break loose and spin with the blade. I'll use a smaller piece of the same diameter to secure everything evenly. I'll place the stock in the saw and line the blade up with my mark, then I'll secure it. I'll turn the saw on with the switch and let gravity do the rest of the work. Once it's cut, it'll automatically turn itself off. Step 3. Facing. Standoffs seem to hold precision to about 20 thousandths. For comparison, a human hair is roughly 2 thousandths. The saw creates an uneven cut, and before we can accurately measure this, we need to face both ends. Facing removes a tiny amount of material to flatten out the uneven edge. At the lathe, we'll mount our part in the chuck. The chuck on a lathe is the same concept as a chuck in a drill. Three jaws lower and hold on to the round part. A lathe chuck is open or closed with a chuck key. With one hand, we'll put our standoff in the center of the chuck, and with the other hand, we'll screw down on the chuck. We'll verify that the part is centered by spinning the chuck with our hands. If the part looks like this, it's obviously not centered, so we'll have to try again. If our part looks like this, we're good. We tighten the jaw in the other two locations, and we're good to go. As you should remember from the safety presentation, chuck keys are the most common source of injury on a lathe. Failure to remove them before starting the lathe will result in it being thrown at the operator or across the room. Never leave a chuck key sitting in the chuck. If you see someone else making this mistake, kindly just remove it for them. We're almost ready to begin facing. To do this, we'll insert our facing tool into the tool post. We push the tool post lever to the left to loosen, and then we drop our tool in. Then we'll tighten it by turning it to the right. For facing, our tool should be at a 15 to 20 degree angle to our face. If this isn't already set, we can loosen the nut at the top of our tool post and rotate it. Make sure to tighten it again once you're done. There's three knobs I'll use to maneuver my tool. This bottom one allows me to quickly jog big distances. This middle one moves perpendicular to the part, and this small one acts as a fine control in the parallel direction. Now that our tool and stock are mounted, we're ready to begin cutting. On the control panel, verify that the switch is in the off position. Turn the red emergency stop button to the right until it clicks open. Press the green button to the right of the switch. Take one last glance to verify that there is nothing in the path of the chuck and that the chuck key is removed. Finally, turn the switch into the forward position and start the spindle. I'll continuously turn the middle knob to remove a small amount of material. Once I pass the center, I back up and turn off the lathe with the red emergency stop button. Once the chuck has completely stopped spinning, I'll use the chuck key to take out the standoff, flip it, and repeat the same thing on the opposite side. Step 4. Measure. Now that we have two flat, parallel faces, we can measure the length of the part. We see that this happens to measure at 1.185 inches. Because we want our final length to be exactly 1 inch, we know that we still have to remove 185 thousandths of an inch of material. For simplicity, we'll call this 185 thou. Write this number down and keep it with you. Step 5. Cut the length. We're ready to cut the final length. Again, mount your part in the chuck. Spin the upper dial until it reaches zero. Now, using the large dial, very lightly touch the face of the part with the tool. We'll treat this as zero. I'll note that there are much better ways of doing this on industrial lathes, but this is effectively the best precision we can achieve. Move the tool off the part, and then start the chuck. Remember, our goal is to remove 185 thousandths of material from the part. The upper dial will indicate how much material we've removed. One rotation is 60 thousandths of an inch, so I find it easy to mentally count in increments of 20 thousandths. I go inwards 20 thou twice, and then cut. I repeat this until I have roughly 60 thousandths remaining. Ah, 
I'll take the part out and measure it again, just to verify its length is as expected. It's likely that we're a little off, so it's nice to remeasure before we take our final pass. I measured this as 1.069 inches, meaning we still have 69 thou left to cut. Knowing this, I'll re-zero and cut the remaining amount. Once I'm done, I'll measure the final length, and as we can see, I'm within about one thou of the desired length. Step 6. Bore. The final step in a standoff is the bore, where we drill a hole. <laughs> we'll insert the drill chuck into the tool post and try our best to make it straight. Once it's mounted, we can insert a center drill into the drill chuck. We use another chuck key to tighten this. Try your best to center the tool on your part and take a small cut. Once you're cutting, you should be able to fine tune your center. When you finally feel like you're centered, you're ready to drill. Check CAD for what size hole is needed and find the corresponding drill bit. For this example, we need a 532 hole, so I'll select the 532 drill bit. I'll secure the drill bit in the chuck and begin cutting. Take your time and make sure to occasionally back up the drill. For a short standoff like this, it's okay to drill all the way through, but for anything longer, we'll only want to drill part way. When we're done, we can retract the drill, turn off the lathe, and remove our part. Standoffs may or may not be tapped, which is a topic for another discussion. Make sure to clean up after yourself, and congrats, you made your first standoff.